In this video, we're going to discuss electron affinity. Now, in the previous video, we talked about ionization energy, which was the, process, the energy associated with the uh, loss of an electron. Now, the electron affinity can actually be thought of as the opposite process. This is the energy change associated with the addition of an electron to an atom. Right, so if we take some general atom X in its gas phase, if it gains an electron, right, it's going to form the anion, right, it's going to gain one charge and form an anion. And so the electron affinity is the energy associated with this process, the formation of this anion. And so basically, we're if it's going to gain one electron, you can think of this electron affinity as measuring how attracted that electron is to the nucleus of your atom, right? So, um, so what I have here on the right-hand side is some experimental data of electron affinities for different atoms. And so we're, we show like the first 90 atoms, right? So going from atomic number zero to 90 on the x-axis, and the y-axis is showing the electron affinity and electron volts. So, um, so you know, there, it might not be a clear trend when you just look at this plot, uh, for the first time, but I think if we start to isolate a few cases, we can start to see the trend and explain why certain atoms have different electron affinities. So let's point out two that have a big difference, right? So let's let's point out lithium, which is here, uh, with an electron affinity of a little over 0 0.5, and fluorine, which has a really high electron affinity, uh, close to 3.5. Right. So um, just like with the ionization energies where the electron that was removed was from the valence shell, same thing here with the electron affinity where the electron that's gained will be placed in the valence shell of that atom. Right. So let's take these two cases of lithium and fluorine. So we know that for lithium and fluorine, uh, both of their valence electron, uh, the valence electrons for both atoms will be in the second principal shell. Right, so that's going to be our 2s and the 2p. Right, for both cases, for lithium and for fluorine. Right, so I have a 2s orbital here and 2p orbitals there. Right, so let's start putting some electrons here. So we know that for lithium, it has three electrons. So you have the core, and it's only going to have that one valence electron that will be in the 2s. Now for fluorine, it has seven valence electrons with two being in the 2s and five being in the 2p, right? So these are our valence electron configurations, right? So now we wanna to think to ourselves, okay, um, where would the electron go if, if we were to add one electron to form the ion, right? So for lithium, that electron would go into 2s, right? Pair with that guy to form the anion. And for fluorine, it would go here in the 2p, to form this anion, right? Now, the question still remains, why is the electron affinity for fluorine so much greater than the one for lithium? And the reason comes from the difference in protons for both atoms. In lithium, we only have three protons, whereas in fluorine, we have nine protons, right? So because fluorine has so many more protons, that's more positive charge. So that electron is gonna be much more attracted to the nucleus of fluorine than it would be for the nucleus of lithium. And so thus this huge gap in electron affinity, this much larger electron affinity for fluorine. But clearly from this trend for the rest of the atoms, you see that it's not that simple. If it was simply just a, a function of the number of protons, then this would just keep going up and up and up and up, right? Uh, but you can see that that doesn't happen, right? So when we look at sodium, right? Sodium is uh, going to go right back down close to where lithium's electron, um, electron affinity is. So what gives? Well, What's happening there is that the electron is actually being placed in a different principal quantum shell, right? So for sodium, and just for the sake of comparison, I'll draw its valence orbital a little bit higher than the ones for, for lithium and fluorine, right? Its valence electron is in the 3s, right? It has a single valence electron in the 3s orbital. So any additional electron that's added would be added to the 3s. 
So that's going to give it a much lower electron affinity because like we said um, originally with these orbitals, as you increase that principal quantum number, the size of the orbital increases. So this electron that will be added to sodium would be much further away from the sodium nucleus than it would be for fluorine, right? So even though sodium, yes, would have an additional proton, uh, well, two additional protons than fluorine, its electrons are going to be placed so much further away that you still have a relatively low electron affinity, right? So it's not just where the how many protons there are in an atom, right? It's also uh, which principal shell the electron is added in. So using those two um, properties, we can rationalize a general trend in electron affinity for the periodic table. So in general, the electron affinity is going to increase going from left to right on the periodic table and increase going from the bottom to the top of a column in the periodic table, right? So um, so just like using the same trend, it increases left to right because you're adding more protons, whereas the electrons are being added in the same principal level. And they would decrease going down the periodic table because you're adding them to principal uh, to orbitals that are much, much further away from the nucleus. Now, using this trend and the trend of ionization energies, we can actually give a really solid explanation for ionic bonding. And I kind of want to do that here. So think about the so let's think about sodium chloride, for example, right? NaCl. Right. So we we first introduced atomic bond, ionic bonding and we use sodium chloride as a classic example where Na plus is interacting with chlorine negative. Right. And I told you in the beginning that it was because of properties of these atoms that sodium would gladly donate an electron to chlorine. Ionization energy and electron affinity are those two properties. So we know that sodium has a really low ionization energy, right? So it's going to readily give up an electron and chlorine has a really high electron affinity. So it will gladly take that electron. And we see this with a lot of ionic bonds where it's, a, it's really an interaction between an atom with a really low ionization energy such that it'll readily give up an electron and an atom with a really high electron affinity that will gladly accept that electron, right? So this is just gives us an overview of electron affinity and gives us a better way to explain ionic bonding now that we have these two properties uh, fully understood.